Battle Tendency is an interesting part with people having a lot of fond memories for it. Coming from Phantom Blood, it seems like a step up, and when entering the early monotony of Stardust Crusaders, I can't blame people for reminiscing about the unpredictable days of Part 2. When it's being judged on its own merits, however, is it really that good? Right off the bat, Joseph as a character, while perhaps not very unique, is initially appealing for those watching. He's funny, badass, a bit unrefined, all these kind of things can be said for a lot of shonen protagonists, so you'll feel at home with this kind of character immediately. As well as this, he's more or less the exact opposite from Jonathan, so it's refreshing in the context of this series to have this brand new perspective. The first fight against Straits is a fantastic start for him. The alleged death of Speedwagon, an established character, had him invested in the outcome of this fight, and seeing a Hamon novice take out a vampire with relative ease let me know that the stakes were going to be higher than ever in this part, as well as showing off the new unorthodox fighting style we'd be dealing with. A popular saying when comparing these two is that while Jonathan is book smart, Joseph is street smart. As well as establishing Joseph, the craziness of bottle tendency is on display here, and it continues right to the end. A cyborg Nazi, blasting straights with a machine gun. The series reaches peak insanity and while from a written standpoint a lot of this part may falter due to its nonsensical nature, I think Battle Tendency can just about get away with it because it doesn't try and hide it, fully embracing this aspect of the part. One of the defining aspects of Joseph is his luck, being one of the few Joestars to live into old age and beat the family curse. When watching, there is a sense of disbelief as we see his feats become increasingly unbelievable throughout the part. Is he a tactical genius or just insanely lucky? It's hard to tell, and the show encourages you to accept the madness in front of you and enjoy the ride. The final fight is pretty hilarious when his luck is confirmed as the only thing that can defeat the ultimate being, and I appreciate the part admitting how unbelievable his victory was. While Phantom Blood introduced the buff poses, Battle Tendency introduced the crazy with one of the biggest draws of Jojo clearly defined, albeit with everything being cranked to 100. Speaking of the final fight, the Pillar Men are fine enough enemies. They feel like a natural progression from vampires and are perfect opponents for the strong main cast. I also enjoyed seeing how well their respective fights fit their character, with ACDC's mind games showing off the wealth of experience these antagonists have and the chariot race embodying Wamu's sense of honour. As well as this, a big part of Wamu's fight is getting revenge for Caesar, but this aspect didn't do much for me. The rivalry of these two was very well done during their first encounter, and while they had certainly became friendlier by the end, I didn't feel the sense of camaraderie that's supposed to be apparent, partly because a lot of the two's time together was done in a one minute montage sequence. It's an unfortunate case of Araki being constrained by the part's length and not doing a good job of strengthening their relationship. In this regard, I was more impressed with how Jonathan and William were portrayed. However, I have to give credit to Caesar's death if nothing else for its parallels to his grandfather's, solidifying the Zapellis as an eternal ally of the Joestars. Battle Tendency is a spectacle, and there isn't much like it. I don't think anyone could reasonably consider it a masterpiece or the best of its genre, but it is a lot of fun, with hilarious unexpected moments, inventive fights and exaggerated characters which leave an impression. At the end of the day, isn't a show being fun all that matters? 